All right, guys, in the last video, what we did is we learned how to set up a really basic server. In other words, we typed a little bit of code, and what we can do is we can pretty much sit, listen for user requests, and whenever a user wants to connect to our website, we send them back a really simple little string of text. Pretty amazing. So, my guess is that if you're learning Node.js, you probably want to build programs that are, you know, a little more interesting than this. One of the main things people want to do is they want to learn how to host a website. So, of course, instead of sending back a little chunk of text, we need to send back files, HTML files, JavaScript files, CSS, and then the browser can, of course, interpret them just like, you know, a website like this. So, let's go ahead and learn how to send back actual files instead of just plain stupid text. So what I'm going to do is just delete everything right here and in this tutorial I'm just going to make like a really simple HTML file and show you guys how to send that but the concept is pretty similar for any type of file with some little differences and we'll talk about those later on but for right now create a new HTML file by clicking show you guys right click public new HTML file and I'm just going to name this like index.html so this would be like the home page of our website and hit OK. Now the cool thing about IntelliJ is it pretty much gives you a template by default. So let's just create something real stupid. I'll give it a title of the new Boston and in the body I'll just say like, wow this site is awesome. Alright so that's probably going to be pretty boring but whatever. And actually let me go ahead. For some reason I like to have my HTML files on left and my JavaScript files on the right. So now what we want to do is whenever they connect to the server, we pretty much want to send them back this HTML file. So how do we accomplish that? Well, the first thing that we need whenever we're working with files is the FS module. Remember this is the file system module and we saw a quick example of that in I don't even know what tutorial it was but before and if we just require that then there you go so now we can work with the files on our computer and whenever you're hosting a website one of the first things you want to do is you want to build a 404 response so for example whenever they try to connect to our website we have one HTML file our home page our index.html however what if they try to connect to like um, about .html or um, you know like movies.html well we don't have those files so what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to send them back a 404 response in other words a response if things go bad so I'm just gonna put like 404 response and let's set this up quick so function I just name it like send 404 response and the only thing we need to pass in here is our response object or what we're sending back. So this is actually going to be pretty similar to what we learned before. Response, let me get this out of the way. So response, right head. And the status code for this is, of course, 404. And the object, of course, is going to be content type text plane. So we're just gonna print out a really simple message. Why is that underlined? Because I spelled response wrong. Alright, there we go. Alright, so if they try to request a file that we don't have, I'm just gonna print out like uh, error 404 page not found, whatever. So response, what data every freaking time. Alright. Error 404 page not found and then take your response and end it so it knows that we're done writing the data and it can send it off alright so hopefully we never have to call this function but if they request a file that we don't have then this is what we're gonna send them now on a request what we're gonna do is we'll say handle their request or handle a user request alright so essentially what this function is going to be responsible for is listening for a request and sending them whatever file that they're requesting. So the first thing we need is just an if statement. Now inside this if statement, we're going to inspect the request. 
So if you call a request, you know how I told you guys in the last tutorial, the request object has information about what exactly they want. Do they want a file? What are they looking for? So first, let's make sure that the method is equal to get. And if you guys don't know about get and post, there are pretty much different ways that you can connect to a server. Um, well, this isn't really a tutorial about that, so I don't want to waste your time. You guys probably already know, I'm guessing. So, Git is pretty much the standard way that you connect to a website. Post, you use whenever you're submitting forms. And there are other ones like put and delete that aren't really that common, but whatever. So, we'll make sure that they're just using Git, nothing fancy here, and we're also going to want to look at the request URL. So remember we actually printed this out in the last tutorial and of course the first thing that they request is what um, web page they're looking for. That was the obvious one. Now we also saw that there was a request behind the scenes for the Favicon. That's one that we don't really want to worry about. So we're first going to check the request URL and if it's equal to forward slash that means that they're just trying to connect to the home page. Forward slash. Simple enough. So if they're trying to connect to the home page, let's just send them back that file. So response, right head, why is that not popping up? Right head, 200, and let me do this. Too lazy to type all that. All right. So unlike before, when we just sent out a plain string of text, what we want to do now is we actually want to send back a file. So instead of text, plain what we're going to send back is text HTML which pretty much means an HTML document just like that now in order to send back an HTML file what we want to do is we actually want to send back something called a readable stream and that's just because a basic response is just sent back in one chunk of text however this file we don't know how big it is. Our programmers, our developers are usually going to change the size of this, whatever. So we want to send it back in a stream and that's just for better performance and to ensure that we don't have any errors. So for our file system object, which is FS, the first thing we want to do is create a readable stream. So we're essentially going to read this file, which is index.html. So now we're reading that file and then we want to call a function called pipe and this just means pipe it out or write it out or feed it out whatever you want to call it the stream to the response object which is pretty much the response that we're sending back so what do we want to pipe out this bit of information we're going to send it out through the response object so I'm going to add one more condition right here and check it out course we know whenever they make a request we call this function and then we check are they trying to, to connect to the home page if so send them back index.html else that must mean that they were trying to connect to a web page that we don't have maybe like um, bacon.html we don't have one of those so in that case we're just gonna send a 404 response and of course we need to pass along our response object so that's actually it. Let me go ahead and run this bit of code and check it out. Our server is now running. All right, we're browsing the web. Pretty cool. The new boss in, that's a pretty cool site. However, let's go to this hot new site I learned about called localhost AAAA. It's supposed to be the hottest thing to hit the web. Go back and look at this. The greatest site ever. So again, what we did here is whenever we connected to the home page, the server which is running, don't really need that. It looked at our request, says, yep, you're using Git and you requested just the default home page. So I'm gonna serve you or I'm gonna respond with this file right here, index.html. So that's our response and also say that we wanted to, um, I don't know, say that some user was goofing around and they tried to go to like corn bacon .html. Well, obviously that web page does not exist. We didn't made it. We didn't make it, so check it out. That's when we get our error 404 page not found, and you can probably figure out they did make a request successfully, so they did connect to the server, no problem. However, we checked the request. We didn't have anything for them, so we just redirected them to this function, 
and sent back a 404 response. So there you go, pretty simple. That's the core basics of creating a really simple web server or file server. So uh, yeah, if you have any questions, ask me on the forum. If not, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.